GPT-4 just came out a couple weeks ago and I can't even contain myself. It is so amazing. Just last week, I used it to write a blog post that ranked on page one of Google in a matter of hours. So today I'm gonna to show you my exact process for how to use GPT-4 to write and rank your blog posts. If you're new to my channel, my name is Corey. I'm a blogger and AI content specialist and it's my mission to share with you everything I know about how to make money online with your content and the best tools for doing so. I'm an affiliate for some of the tools I talk about in this video and there are affiliate links in the description box below, which means that if you make a purchase after clicking on one, I may earn a commission. It's actually mind boggling to me how fast AI is evolving in 2023 which is super exciting, but it also means that some of my older videos are not quite as relevant as they were. In particular, last year, I uploaded a video about how to write an SEO blog post, and it's still a great video, if I do say so myself, but my process has evolved quite a bit since then to keep up with the rapidly changing technology. So today I thought I would share with you exactly what's been working for me and all the steps and tools for ranking a blog post in 2023. The blog post I'll be using as a case study today will be this blog post, How to Save Your Knees Without Sacrificing Your Workout. This whole article, no joke, took me less than an hour start to finish. And I don't just mean drafting the article, I mean editing, optimizing, all that fussy nuanced stuff that transforms your blog post from one in millions to a serious page one contender. And after I published it in the afternoon, it was ranking near the top of page one later that night. Now I will add the caveat that this process doesn't work every single time. It depends a lot on your site's domain authority and the keywords that you're targeting. So it's really important to choose keywords that are low competition and relevant to your niche and expertise. In this case, I used a long tail keyword, which has a search volume of 90, which sounds really low, but it's just an estimate and it's usually actually much higher than that. I've had volume 90 posts bring in hundreds of clicks to my site per month. So if you need more information on how to find keywords, I have a couple of great videos on how to do that up here. For now, we're gonna jump right into this and feel free to adapt this strategy to your own blogging process. So the first step is drafting the blog post. And in this example, I used ChatGBT because at the time of this recording, it's really the only way I was able to access the latest language model. And for those who are not in the know, the AI writers were running on GPT-3 and 3.5 for pretty much all of last year or so up until a couple weeks ago when OpenAI released GPT-4. And the difference in quality with GPT-4 is absolutely mind blowing. Like GPT-4 is literally passing bar exams and stuff. That's how knowledgeable and intelligent it is. Having said that, you still wanna vet its content and make sure that it's factually accurate. You'll always be responsible for ensuring the content you deliver to your audience is high quality and correct. But I've just been totally blown away by these outputs. Now, a quick side note to my fellow Jasper knots out there who might be like, whoa, what about Jasper AI? Don't panic, Jasper is still great. I still love Jasper and I'm really excited to see how they develop that tool this year. But GPT-4 isn't available on Jasper just yet. They are working on integrating it, so it is coming. It's really just a matter of when. And one of the things that I love about Jasper is that they take the time to customize the technology specifically for marketing purposes. So I have no doubts that when it is available on Jasper, it's going to be amazing and fast because ChatGPT is slow. Regardless, if you want to test out GPT-4, ChatGPT is pretty much the only way I know of to access it right now. And it's not free, you do have to update to the ChatGPT Pro account. But once you've done that, you can start a new chat and from the Dropbox, you'll see you have an option to select GPT-4. And you may notice that there's a note at the bottom here about limiting how many outputs you have and that's because this is a brand new feature and there's a lot of demand for it right now and they're still working on scaling it. But 25 outputs is more than enough for turning out a blog post. All right, so here is the ChatGPT thread from my blog post about how to save your knees. Now, as for the prompts I used, these are pretty much the same prompts from my how-to prompt stack that I talked about in my prompt engineering video from a couple weeks ago. And if you want them, you can download those prompts for free using the link in the description box. So my first command was just asking ChatGPT to give me an outline with the article, which we have a nice long outline here. And then basically I've just split up the blog post into parts. So the main prompt is in second person narrative using a humorous, clever, educational tone of voice, write the first part of the blog post, 
do not include the numbers, letters, notating the outline. Do include examples, tips, and analogies occasionally throughout the article where they make sense. Your output should cover the following. And then I pasted the first few talking points of the article. And I did it this way because if you ask ChatGPT to write too much at once, you'll probably get an error. And this did actually happen to me a few times when I was testing out GPT-4 where I asked it to do too much at once and then it stopped and the text would go red saying that it couldn't complete the generation. But sometimes the output it had done up to that point was so good. So I copied and pasted it before regenerating. And a lot of times I did like the first output better, so I would use it. So you will see that in my final compiled draft here uh, that I compiled in Google Docs is a bit different than what is showing in the thread here, but it is all generated by ChatGPT. But to avoid that problem, my recommendation to you is to keep it to one or two talking points at a time instead of three or four like I did. Anyway, you can see it's the same process all the way down. So ChatGPT wrote the first section of the blog post, and then I did the exact same command and then just posted the next two talking points. And then they wrote some more and all the way down until I got to the conclusion. Here in this part, I did ask ChatGPT to rewrite uh, the section to expand on it a bit more. So that was sort of one of the troubleshooting prompts. And then here's my conclusion prompt, which is in a second person narrative using humorous, clever, educational tone, write a conclusion paragraph that briefly summarizes the article and ends on an encouraging note for the reader. As a reminder, here's the below outline of the article. And then I have the entire outline posted. So then I have my little conclusion here. And then you'll see I have a couple extra prompts, which I ran after the fact during the optimization phase. So while I was optimizing the article, which I'll show you in just a moment, I did notice that I needed an extra section about the reasons for knee pain. So I just asked ChatGPT to simply write me a couple paragraphs about the common reasons for knee pain. And then I also ran a prompt asking for an FAQ about protecting your knees while working out because I had forgotten to run that prompt initially. But this was the original first draft that I compiled in Google Docs using those prompts. And from there, I was ready to move on to step two, which was optimization. For optimization, I just pasted it into Surfer SEO here. So I created a content editor for this keyword, how to save your knees without giving up your workout. And then I just pasted the entire article in here. And if you've never used Surfer before, on the right here, you have a content score gauge, which shows how well optimized Surfer thinks your content is. And you'll want to try and match as many of these criteria as you can in terms of word count, headings, paragraphs, and images. But where the magic really happens is down here in the terms section. So these are all the terms that Surfer thinks the article should include to signal to Google that this is a complete piece of content and therefore a good candidate for ranking in the SERPs. And so when I first pasted it in here, my score was quite low. So I'll just show you here for a moment. So here, when I posted the original draft, my score was only 42, which actually to say I hadn't done any optimizing yet was still pretty good. And the way I got that score up was by working these terms here into the article. And the key is to work them in, in a way that sounds natural. So for example, Surfer wants me to work in this term here, extra pounds. So in order to do that, I would have to read through the content and see where I could work that in. And what I used to do is I used to look for a similar or related word using control F and then typing in that relative term. So extra pounds is related to weight. So I would look for weight and then find a relevant term by pressing these arrows. So here's a passage about how being overweight. So I can just change the verbiage here from excess weight to extra pounds. And as I add those terms to the article, it updates in the terms section over here. So this used to be a pretty time consuming thing, right? Adding terms one by one like this, but Surfer recently added a feature that makes this so much easier and faster. And that is this insert terms feature where it will find places to put the terms for you. So I just click on this here and then just give it a minute to load up some ideas. And now I can just review these suggestions. So most of the time they are pretty good, but they don't always make sense. So this first one is here are some common reasons for knee and joint pain. So that's good. I could just click accept on that. Or if I didn't like the placement, sometimes there's also multiple options here. So I have four placement options for this particular turn, but I'm just going to go with the first one and click accept. 
And here it wants me to put the entire keyword phrase here, but that doesn't really make sense in this case. So I would just click dismiss and same for this one. Now in this case, I only got three terms, but I had already optimized this pretty well. But once you've gone through the list, you can just hit save and you can just keep doing it over and over again. So I would just click insert new terms and it'll come up with new ways to insert those terms. And you can just run through that list as many times as you need to until you get your score up until the green bar. And honestly, there's no need to try and squeeze every single term into the article. And in fact, if you try to do that, it might end up backfiring because it'll read too spammy. So I usually aim for about 80, but as long as it's in the green bar, you're good to go. Now the optimization stage is done and it's time to move on to spelling, grammar, and plagiarism checking. So for this, I use Grammarly Pro. So I'm just gonna paste this document here into Grammarly. And then along this side here, you'll have all the suggestions, but I usually just click on this one that says correctness. And then you can just review these quickly and just correct them as you go. So we got some comma punctuation stuff here, verbiage, wear and tear spelling, keep your knees in top, at tip top, in tip top shape, that's the problem. Right, so we can just kind of edit quickly over time. Right, so we're just kind of quickly rapid fire here going through. All right, perfect. Now there are a bunch of other fields to check your document for clarity and correctness and stuff. And you can review those too if you want, but if you're in a hurry to get the blog post out, you can just as easily skip it. So once I'm done with the grammar and spelling, I'll click on the plagiarism check down here at the bottom. And usually it will come back with a few flags, but they're almost always nothing, like a few words taken out of context. So my whole title is obviously not plagiarism. Your knee joint is comprised of three bones. So we could just say made up of three bones. Knee joints, so just edit it a little bit. You could take the necessary steps. Like I wouldn't really call that plagiarism, right? That's probably, you've probably read that exact expression in hundreds of articles. So it's a very, very sensitive filter. So it does end up giving you bogus flags a lot of the time, but that's it for Grammarly. Now, the next step is something I just started doing in the past few months, and that is to run the content through originality.ai. Now this step is totally optional because the truth is Google does not give a hoot if you're using AI to write your content or not. And I've made videos about this before about why I thought this, but Google has even updated their guidelines since then and have come right out and said that they don't care about it as long as it's a good piece of content that's serving the reader. However, I still like to run it through here because if it gets a low originality score, that's a sign that there's maybe some poor writing there or repetitive or redundant phrases or things that maybe don't sound natural. And that can make for a bad reader experience, right? So I like to check it out here just to be sure so I'll just paste in there and then just put my title up here. This also has a plagiarism checker tool, but I don't use it ever because I have Grammarly. And then I just have this box detect AI and click scan now. So here we can see that ChatGPT completely breezes by the AI content detection, which we got a 98% originality score. This is a vast improvement over ChatGPT's previous language model, which used to get very, very high AI scores. The next step is WordPress optimization. So for this step, I just pasted my article from Grammarly into WordPress, and then I worked through the Yoast SEO checklist, which is down here. And this process really hasn't changed at all for me since the last time that I went through this on YouTube. I added some images as well as alt descriptions. I put my keyword phrase in the introduction, my SEO title, my meta description. I also added the FAQ schema markup, which is good for boosting SEO. And I put in my affiliate disclosure and added an affiliate link somewhere in here. I think it was right here. So I'm actually not gonna go into detail on all the steps at this point because I have a video that's totally dedicated to optimizing your article in WordPress, which I will tag at the top there. Other than that, I just edited the article a little bit for personality 
I added a few of my own comments and ideas so that the article read more like it was written by me. Then I published the article and I headed over to Google Search Console, plugged my URL into the top here and indexed it. And this is a really important step for getting your content to rank sooner by asking Google to put it in its priority queue for crawling. And voila, a few hours later, I was on page one. Now again, this process doesn't work every time, but when it doesn't work, you can be fairly confident that it's not because of your on-page optimization. More likely, you'll need a stronger backlink profile and greater EEAT, which stands for Experience, Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness. But as you can see, AI tools have come a really long way in even the past year. And in particular, GPT-4 is really an incredible upgrade for bloggers. I can't wait for it to become universal in all AI writing software and see what other new tools will evolve from it. So that's all for today. Don't forget to pick up your copy of the GPT how-to blog post stack. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.